Today we are going to learn how to graph rational functions from a single term. By the end of this video, you should be able to find the asymptotes, intercepts, and end behavior of rational functions. You should be able to graph rational functions and find removable discontinuities. First, let's start with a problem like we saw last class. We have f of x equals 1 over x minus 3 plus 2. So this function would have a vertical asymptote of x equals 3. and a horizontal asymptote of y equals 2. Then if you type this in the calculator and go to the table to find extra points, your graph would look like this. Now, if we take this function and try to write it as one fraction by finding a common denominator, this would be 2 over 1. I would have to multiply this by x minus 3 over x minus 3 and distribute. I would end up with 2x minus 5 over x minus 3. Now if we compare this to what we know our horizontal and vertical asymptotes are, you should see that our denominator stayed the same. So we are going to find our vertical asymptote by continuing to look at the denominator. The horizontal asymptote is a little bit trickier to figure out. The only place we have a 2 in this function is in the numerator with 2x minus 5. So we'll see how to figure that out in a minute. When you're trying to graph rational functions written as single terms, first you need to find the vertical asymptote. And you do that by setting the denominator equal to 0. Then you need to find the horizontal asymptote, which has several cases, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Then you want to find the x-intercepts which you find by setting the numerator equal to 0. Then you want to find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, you plug 0 in for x. And then lastly, you're going to use your calculator to find any other points. So the rules for horizontal asymptotes require you to look at the degree of the numerator and denominator. Remember that the degree is the highest exponent. So if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then your horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then you need to divide the leading coefficients. And lastly, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, you have no horizontal asymptote. We're not going to get into that case much this year, but you will definitely see the first two where the numerator degree is less than the denominator degree and where the degrees are equal. Let's look at a few examples. First, we have h of x equals 6 over x squared plus x minus 12. 
So the first thing we need to do is find the vertical asymptote. And to do that, we need to set the denominator equal to zero. So if we have x squared plus x minus 12 equals zero, the best thing to do is factor. So your factors would be x plus 4 and x minus 3. So you'd get that x is equal to negative 4 and positive 3. So in this situation, we actually have two vertical asymptotes. So let's go ahead and graph those. Then we need to find the horizontal asymptote. So we need to look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Since the numerator does not have an x, the degree is 0. And since the denominator has an x squared, our degree is 2. So the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So that tells us that our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So we can graph that. Then we need to find the x-intercept. There could be more than one x-intercept. To do that, we need to set the numerator equal to 0. So if we have 6 equals 0, there's no x. We don't have anything to solve for. And 6 is not equal to 0. So we have no x-intercepts. Then to find the y-intercept, we need to plug in 0 for x. You can either do this by hand, or you can do this using the store button. If you're going to do it by hand, you would do 6 divided by 0 squared plus 0 minus 12, and you would end up with negative 1 half. So 0, negative 1 half would be your y-intercept. If you prefer to use the calculator, you would simply do 0, store for x, then type in your function. 6 divided by x squared plus x minus 12. And it gives you negative 1 half. Then step five is to go to the calculator, type in your function, and try to find a few points to plot. So if you go to y equals and type in our equation, and go to the table, Again, you want to see if there are any nice points that are integers. So we have negative 3, negative 1. Which is a nice point to plot. You might have to scroll a little bit. You have 2, negative 1. Then it doesn't look like we have any more integer points, but we can still pick one that's decent to graph. So 4 3 fourths would be about here. And then we need a point all the way to the left. So let's do negative 5 3 fourths. Then you want to sketch in your graph. And if you want to double check your work, you can go back to the calculator and click on graph.
So your graph should look similar to the one in the calculator. Then we need to find the domain. Just like last class, the domain is where the denominator is equal to zero. So you look at the vertical asymptotes and you'll have x such that x does not equal negative four or three. For this problem, we're going to skip the range because it's a little bit complicated and we're just going to write down the end behavior. So at both ends of the graph, it is approaching the horizontal asymptote. So as x approaches positive and negative infinity, f of x approaches zero. For this next example, we have k of x equals x minus one over x. First, we need to find the vertical asymptote by setting the denominator equal to zero. Since the denominator is x, we just get x equals zero. Then for our horizontal asymptote, we need to look at the degree of the numerator and denominator The highest exponent in the numerator is 1 because we just have an x and same thing with the denominator. So the degrees are equal. So then we need to find the leading coefficients. The leading coefficient in the numerator is 1 and the leading coefficient in the denominator is also 1. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be 1 divided by 1 which is 1. Next, we need to find the x-intercepts, and we do that by setting the numerator equal to zero. So if we have x minus one equals zero, and then you solve, you get x equals one. So our x-intercept is going to be one, zero. Then to find the y-intercept, you're going to plug zero in for x, but if we try to do that, we end up dividing by zero. So there is no y-intercept. Now we can go to the calculator and try to find some more points. So again, we want to look for the points that are integers. So we have negative 1, 2, and 1, 0. And 1, 0 is our x-intercept, so we've already plotted that. Now we can sketch in our graph and make sure that the graph approaches the asymptotes. Now our domain in this problem is again related to the vertical asymptote so we have x such that x does not equal zero. If we were going to write the range um, we could do that because this one looks like the graphs that we did last class. The range would be related to the horizontal asymptote which would be y such that y does not equal one. And then the end behavior, both ends approach the horizontal asymptote. So we have as x approaches positive and negative infinity, f of x approaches 1. One last thing to discuss is the removable discontinuity. So this occurs when factors cancel out. And this results in a hole in the graph. So we're going to start by factoring this function. So if I factor the numerator, I have x plus 2 and x plus 1. Factor the denominator, I get 
x minus 2 and x plus 1. So the x plus 1s will cancel. And this simplifies to x plus 2 over x minus 2. So since I had factors cancel out, I know I'm going to have a whole or a removable discontinuity. So when I'm trying to find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, I'm going to use the simplified expression, which is x plus 2 over x minus 2. So I'm going to set that denominator equal to 0. So I have x minus 2 equals 0, and that gives me x equals 2. Then to find the horizontal asymptote, I need to look at the degree of the numerator and denominator. The degree of both of these is 1, so I need to look at the leading coefficient, which for both of these is 1. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be 1 divided by 1, which is 1. Now, I need to figure out where my hole is going to be. And that occurs by looking at the factor that canceled. So the factor that canceled out was x plus 1. If I set that equal to 0 and solve, I get x equals negative 1. Then I want to take negative 1 and plug it in for x in my simplified function. So if I have negative 1 plus 2 over negative 1 minus 2, that equals 1 over negative 3 or negative 1 third. So then I'm going to graph my whole, which is negative 1, negative 1 third, and represent that by an open circle. Then I need to find my x-intercept, which I'm going to do by setting the numerator of the simplified function equal to 0. So I have x plus 2 equals 0. When you solve that, you get negative 2 as your x-intercept. Then I need to find the y-intercept, which I do by plugging 0 in for x. And I get negative 1. So I can go to my calculator and I'm going to type the whole function and then I'm going to go to the table. So again I want to try to find points that are integers. So I have negative 2, 0, which I've already graphed because that's my x-intercept. I have 0, negative 1, which I've already graphed because that's my y-intercept. Then I have 1, negative 3, and I have 3, 5, and 4, 3. So I can connect these points to graph my function. Now, if I double check this by looking at the graph on the calculator, you cannot see where the hole is on this graph. But if you go back to the table, you can see that at negative 1, it says error. That means there is some sort of discontinuity there. But when you look at the graph, you can see that there is not an asymptote at negative 1, so it must be a whole or a removable discontinuity.